Hello and welcome back. So with the conclusion of the last Sculpt Tool projector video, I think it's time for us to move away from the projector, correctly? Yes, um, pretty much all the functionality that I wanted to have in it, matter of fact, I'm pretty much, but uh, all the functionality that I want the projector to have at this point in time is now complete. Now it's time to look at some of the uh, um, underlying the base tool? functionality of the tool itself. Okay. What we want to look at in this video is the ability to turn the tool on and off and how it's going to interact with the uh, the mouse cursor. Because right now, when we run, the moment that you click inside of the window, mm -hmm. the uh, mouse handler takes over and disables the mouse cursor, mm -hmm. which makes it kind of hard to determine where your mouse is when you're trying to figure out where to put your sculpt tool. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add um, some more functionality to the mouse handler that's going to allow us to determine whether or not uh, it's going to take control of the, the cursor itself. And we're going to add code into our train sculptor that is going to enable and disable the sculpt tool as well as the projector itself. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right. Let me go ahead and that up for you. All right, so let's start off. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, give it back. <laughs> Man, it, you know, it's hard to work with you sometimes, I like swear. Like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, it's like, a, you can write this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need a, no, a new public static. This is going to be a bull. And we're going to call it enable. I bet you can't guess what this does. Makes it day or night. Wow. <laughs> I never thought you'd get that. That was awesome. <laughs> well, thank yes, you. It, it makes it day and night. Okay, whatever. Day or night, I swear. All right. So this is going to determine whether or not our tool is enabled or not. Inside of our update, we're going to look for some keyboard input. The input that we're going to be looking for is going to be input dot uh, get key down. Oh, come on. You're not going to give that to me? Well, I got close. Sometimes ReSharper <laughs> helps. Sometimes it just goes, no, I'm going to mess you up. All right. So we're going to look for the T. So our T key has been assigned to toggle our sculpt tool. Could have used S, but I chose T. And then the other thing is I want to make sure that we are not enabled. So if we're not enabled and we hit the T key, that uh, enable. That's supposed to be enabled. All right, now it's enabled. But um, we only want the T key to uh, run this next bit of code when it's not enabled, so we're actually turning the tool on. So that's when it will fire this bit of code. Else, if our T key is pressed, so I'm going to copy that bit of code and save me some typing, or paste again, we hit the escape key then we're going to run the code needed to disable the tool. So we'll start off by hitting enable and setting it to true. In this case, we're going to set enable and set it to false. Okay. After this, we're going to take our projector. We're going to set enabled to true. This will turn on the projector. Otherwise, our projector dot enabled is going to equal false. And I'm going to take this line of code and I'm going to go up to train sculptor. And the last bit of this is I'm going to set our projector to false, which means when we start off, I don't want our 
um, projector to be turned on. And I also want enabled to be set to false. So technically I could set enabled to false too, but I'm going to force it separately because I don't want to run the same bit of code each and every time. So enabled equals false. All right, so that will set our initial states for our tool. Now, we still have to deal with our mouse handler. But right now, our mouse handler isn't capable. So our mouse lock here, this class, isn't able to be overwritten. It doesn't have that functionality built into it. So we have to go back and modify it. So we're going to take our mouse lock, and we're going to add another property to it. So we're going to go public static bool. I'm going to call this override enabled. Get and set. And let's see, we need to go to right if, if, else if here. And we need to set this and not override enabled. So basically, if the uh, lock cursor was not locked and not override, then we can go ahead and lock the cursor. So basically, what we're doing is checking everywhere where we could lock the cursor and then making sure that that only happens if we don't have override enabled. So here, if not override enabled, then go ahead and lock the cursor. And then we need to add another condition under here to handle what happens if we are locked and then we turn on our override. So we're going to go if screen dot lock cursor and override enabled then we're gonna unlock our cursor so basically we've set up the ability that if our cursor is going to be locked and we've overridden it it's not gonna allow the cursor to be locked and if we are locked and we uh, override our um, our cursor will force it to be unlocked. So that will take care of that part. Now we need to go back into Train Sculptor and tell it that go ahead and override our mouse lock when needed. So mouse lock dot override and alt enter override enabled equals true. So the moment we enable our tool, we override the mouse lock. And when we turn our tool off, we no longer override it. So that will handle the mouse locking part of it. We still have to deal with our projector part of it. So let's go down here. So there's a couple of cases that we want to deal with. Mostly, we're checking right now that if our projector hits something, it's going to draw the projector at whatever it hits. I only want our projector to work in cases where there it's hitting the terrain. So in that case, we need to modify stuff. In other words, I forgot something from the projector, but you know, I can fit it here. Or we can come back and do it in a, No, another it's fine. Place. It's fine to fit it here. Okay, cool. It's not much. It's uh, basically now that we know um, we want to restrict it to the terrain, we're going to just basically say um, check or well, well, let's go here 
And so we'll do this. This is fine. But I don't want to move unless I will go if our, um, what am I looking for? Hit info dot collider dot name, I think it is, or no, layer. Um, I'm trying to find it. I'm blind right now. Collider dot tag equals terrain. So if it equals train, go ahead and draw it to that point. If it does not equal train, then I'm going to turn it off. That also means that if it does, I need to turn it on. So that will turn it on. And then over here, if we don't hit anything, I guess Nelson was back at uh, Refactor. Projector enabled equals false. So what's going on here is we're basically, if we've hit something, check to make sure that it's tagged as terrain. If it is, then go ahead and position and show the, the projector. If it's not, turn the projector off. And if um, we don't hit anything, like if for some reason you take the mouse cursor, and you put it up into the sky, I don't want the projector to be drawn then either. So that will handle that part of the condition. So let me think and make sure there's one other thing I want to check. Let's run it. Because I wanna I don't remember if I set our train to be tagged as train as well. I might have to fix that. So here's this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's untagged. It's untagged. So we need to make sure that it's tagged. We do have a train tag, but it's not being tagged right now. So that will require us to go back in the code, find our terrain patch, and a little bit further, train patch. I don't need properties, why is that there? All right, take care of that. All right. So here is our train patch where we're being created. We are tagging as train. So, oh, it's not the top level that's no, tagged as train. So, so that's the mesh object itself. And inside of it initialized, I have train object. So let's set its, its tag as well. So train object dot tag equals terrain and train object dot layer equals and down line ninety. Yeah, I was just wondering if we set it here. So we do set that. So we did cover that before. All right, so that'll set that level to be set up. So back. We don't really need the side-by-side -side comparison, so we can get a little bit more real estate on the game window. All right, so first off, we see this to begin with, which we shouldn't. So if you point on top of her, what happens? Okay, so it's still drawing there. If you point on the sky, what happens? It does go away. Well, I'm off the terrain anyways, I mean. Yeah, but it would still draw wherever it was left, I thought. 
Perhaps. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe. It doesn't seem like it's working, though. So I need to figure out what's going on with that because that should be taking care of it. Escape doesn't do anything. T doesn't do anything. So something's still not behaving the way it's supposed to. So let's go see what's going on. And, oh yeah, there's one very good reason why it would not work the way I want it to. Um, if I go to the Train Sculptor, and I go to Update, I probably shouldn't call Handle Brush and Handle Sculpt Tool if we're not enabled. So if not enabled, Return. So that should take care of that part. Now, let's deal with this problem. All right, so if we don't hit anything, the projector should go off. If whatever we hit is not equal to train, it should turn off. The only time we should see the projector is when we're pointing on something called terrain. So let's do Wow, I cannot type. <laughs> so debug.log. So this will be now. All right. So no terrain tool. That's a start. What if you hit T? All right. What if you hit T again? All right. What if you hit T and then escape? Okay. Now, do you see a mouse cursor? Right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. If you hit escape? Yes. Do you, have, you do? What if you click in the window? Gone. Okay, now if you hit uh, T again. Have a mouse cursor. Okay, if you click in the window while you're doing that, should still have a mouse cursor. Yep. Okay, now if you point on her, what happens? So, oh, you know why? Because it's still casting through her. Okay. Because it's a ray, so it's going to keep drawing all the way through her. So as long as it, it eventually does hit something, that says terrain, it's okay. Now, if uh, I bring up this window real quick and clear this so you can see that it's not hit any conditions, what if you go draw on the sky? Okay. So, not yeah. Anything. Yeah, so that part's working. But because it's seeing, well, we could do this. Let's, um, I'm going to create a new game object. I'm going to create a sphere. Go click on the sphere. Not on terrain. There it goes. But because she's on the terrain and you're casting a ray through it, then you're seeing it. So if I go to take the sphere, and let's say I drop it down to 23. Not too far, too low. But... Uh, where do you want it at? About right here? Yeah. All right, so now if you draw on it, it's, it's still coming up. Oh, I'm saying not on train. But if you click on her, it, it still thinks it's train? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm over her. I'm over sphere. For her, okay. Over sphere. Apparently, she's about as useful as train. Okay, so let's escape. <laughs> 
So let's look at what's going on possibly with her. So she's tagged as player. Um, hold on. I wonder if that's why, because she only has a character controller, mm -hmm. and it's not a real not collider. Not a collider, yeah. So it's not going to pick her up. So it's not stopping the ray because she's uh, a regular. But we can try this. Um, capsule, create other, oh no, component. Physics, I want to create a capsule collider. Um, let's see, already existing, oh yes, yeah, go ahead, add it, whatever. All right, so, this would be funny. All right. This is that part when we keep talking about doing stuff on the fly. That's the part we're at right now. So if this blows up, just remember that video. So height, I believe she is 1.87, so 0.935, uh, I think my height's off. It's been a while since I've... messed with her. Oh, 1.67. That's right, and so, yeah, that's close enough, jeez, I'm getting all nitpicky, now try hovering over, no. hold on a sec, I need to bring up this, yeah, all right, now if you hover on her, yeah, it's not, it's not picking it up. That mm -hmm. still is. But that's yeah, but not. Hers not. Oh, well. It was just a shot. It's probably too too busy trying to uh, deal with uh, her animations and everything else. Well, I mean, the bottom line out. is the idea is when sculpting, we're not going to have a character. We're going to be with some type of Maya-like camera, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay, just but just it's. Me. I was just kind of trying to sort out why she wasn't picking up a collider, which is kind of weird. Gotcha. But I can test something because I just want to do this. You're gonna add, add her in over there? No, 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 no. I'm gonna basically say I'm gonna take this line of code. Mm-hmm. Because I have a player tag. Yeah, that's what I meant by are you going to put her in? Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I am. So, because she's tagged as the player. So if the ray is picking her up at all, we should see it. Okay, yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, it is early. You know why? Why is that? Because you said to ignore every single thing except? No, that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see that one. <laughs> I put her on the ignore Raycast layer so she doesn't interfere with uh, Raycast. Well, there you go. So it's doing its job. Of course, you know, somebody that's been watching this has probably been screaming at their monitor for the last five minutes going, you dummies, look. <laughs> okay, well, you know, now we know why. But I just had to sort that out. I, I couldn't leave it be without knowing the reason why it wasn't working. Gotcha. <laughs>
So now we know why. All right, so we've proven that all of these conditions work. So we know that if you're on something other than the train, it's not going to draw the projector. And if you happen to not hit anything, it will not draw the projector. We verified that we can toggle our tool on and off. We can uh, override our mouse lock so that we get our mouse cursor back the moment we turn our tool on. And I believe that was everything that I set to do in this video, plus a little bit. Awesome. Okay, then with that, that is going to wrap up this video.